always told the story of uh, a notorious robber in Lagos in those days when I was very young. His name was Anikura. Some of the older people who know Anikura. Anikura was so notorious that they wax a record to sing it about him. And what they said in that record, and I think the record came out around 1951 or so. They said, Anikura will not ask you not to trade. Anikura will not ask you not to gain. But Anikura will see to it that you don't take the gain home. That describes the situation in the life of some people. They are working hard. Money is being made. But at the end of the year, they sit down. How much came in this year? So many millions. What did we do with the money? Nothing. Where is the money? Gone. I pray tonight, every Anikura in your life shall be consumed by fire in Jesus' name. In name we have prayed. May the Almighty God grant your request. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now please be seated. I just want to give you a hint of what daddy says is in store for the new year now there are all manners of prophets out there and so you'll be hearing all manners of prophecies in, in the coming days all manners. Now I'm talking to you, my children, not criticizing anybody. Just I have my duty to make sure I teach my children, my own children. When God speaks, <coughs> He speaks specifically. There is no maybe or perhaps. He speaks. So if you hear somebody prophesying and says, it is likely one of the following people uh, will succeed. That's not a prophecy. That's personal opinion. When God speaks, he will say, this fellow will succeed. That fellow is not going to make it. That's the way God speaks. He doesn't say he's likely. He didn't say, say, say you to the righteous. It is likely to be well with him. No. Say ye to the righteous. It shall be well. And when God speaks, some of the things he says will, may baffle your brain a little. And I'll give you an example. I've always told you I'm not a prophet. I'm just a pastor. 
but I hear from God once in a while. Years ago, there were three people contesting to be president of Nigeria. Abiola, uh, Amino Kano, and uh, one third fellow. What is the name now? Sofa. Something like that. Sofa, I think so. At that time, I was president of Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. And so the other Pentecostal people asked me, Sir, what do we do? Who do we vote for? And three of them, all three Muslims. Who is going to win, sir? I said, none. Uh-uh. How can that be? <laughs> if you toss a coin, when it lands, it's either head or tail. I said, no. He said, why? Because God told me. He spoke in a parable. He said, the winner will be the loser. The loser will be the winner. And the luckiest of them is Amino Kano. Uh -uh. How do we... Amino Kano died before the election. Abiola won, but he never got to the throne. And the fellow who lost, at least he didn't have the embarrassment of winning and not reigning. The winner is the loser, the loser is the winner, the luckiest of them is the one who died. When it played out, <laughs> my colleagues came to me and said, well, well, it seems as if really hard. For example, if somebody asked me today, like many people are already doing, that who is going to be our next president, the answer is, I don't know. How can you say you don't know? That, I mean, your daddy, son, he hasn't told me yet. You don't do guesswork when it comes to prophecy. Okay? So it doesn't matter how you are feeling right now. As far as you are concerned, your siege is over. That is prophecy. That one is no, no guesswork. I had that one directly from that day. I had that one directly. It is not the siege may be over. It's not perhaps, maybe, uh, I mean. How will you feel if I, if me, if, uh, how will I feel if I ask you, are you married? And you say, well, maybe, perhaps, uh, you, maybe or so or no, then you are not married. If you are married, are you married? The answer will be what? Ah, is either yes or no. I say it one more time. In the name of the one who sent me, your siege is over.
Now, it's not everything God tells a prophet that he can tell. He will say, uh -uh. this vision is for later. Seal it. If he says so, then seal it. So if he tells me anything, and he said, don't say it yet, I will keep my mouth shut. If he says what I'm telling you, you have to look for a proper language to present it. And I will turn to him. Please give me the proper language. Having said that one, the following are the things he said specifically, which anybody can pick up and key into. Number one, are you ready? Daddy says more than 80% of projects started in 2022 will succeed. It has nothing to do with the economics of the world. No, no, no. When he speaks, it is more than 80% of the projects started in this year will succeed. Number two. He said this year will be a year of emergence of previously unknown stars. Previously unknown stars will emerge this year. Take note of my word. He said, number three, in spite of everything that may be happening, this year is going to be year, a year of some massive breakthroughs. In science, and in finances. Massive breakthroughs. And there's this one that I like very much. Number four. He said, infant mortality rate will drop by at least 50%. He didn't say infants will die. He just said the rate of death is going to be reduced by at least 50%. That is for general. No, oh, one or two others. As for redeemed Christian Church of God. I know some of us will say, okay, what is God saying about Nigeria? Uh, I don't want to prophesy about Nigeria. All I can say is in a parable. You know, the English have a proverb. You don't make omelets without breaking eggs. Have you heard that one before? God will explain that to you. And let's go to intercontinental. That's the world at large. Nigeria is part of that also. Now, if you look at the prophecies of last year, 
2021. The first thing there is that some of the problems of 2020 will spill over to 2021. And we have seen that one. The second prophecy of last year was that the world is not going to get out of the woods. Woods. They won't get out of trouble. Until they admit that Jehovah is God. And I said, last year, if you wrote that of last year down, go and check. The daddy made it clear, you are making uh, vaccines. Huh? He said, as you are making one vaccine, a variant or whatever, a new variant is surfacing. He said it last year. And so from COVID-19, we went to Delta, uh, Alpha. From Alpha, we went to Beta. From Beta, we went to Delta. And now we are talking of Omicron. I told you when we went uh, this uh, whatever this problem of uh, COVID was going to start that the world is going to convulse like a little child the convulsion is still on and the world is not admitting yet that they have to apologize to God. They are still trying science very hard. And they are doing very well. One vaccine after another, then booster. They are trying. And what got me concerned is Omicron. Omicron, and I know scientists who can tear me to pieces for this, I don't care. Omicron is not a baby of COVID-19. It's a grandchild. You know, there are children and grandchildren. It's a grandchild. That's why it's moving faster, but it's softer. But don't let us argue. What do we do? If we ask Nigeria to repent, which we should do, because it's of the mercy of the Lord that God has kept our situation <laughs> uh, normal. And I told you then at the beginning, when he told me this is coming, I cried to him, have mercy on Nigeria. We have no money. We have no doctors. We are not ready. And he told me, and I told you, son, I have had your cry. In Nigeria, only those whose time has come will die. And up to today, after two years, the number of deaths from COVID-19 in Nigeria it's just a little over 3,000. Whereas 4,000 is dying in a day in another African country. 
and you can't ask the Senate to repent. Nigeria tried it. Ask them to repent. They will tell you <laughs> the pastor in the Senate is the Senate president, not that the Jew. You can ask the uh, House of Representatives to repent. They will tell you the speaker is our pastor, not you. That's why we begin our meetings without prayer. We do our own thing our own way. So mind your own business. So how do we get out, out of this trouble? A friend of mine suggested, and some of you have been hearing about this, my friend. One day I will introduce him to you. He said, you are our pastor. Apologize for us. I said, I see. Good advice. Why am I telling you this? I'm going to need 1,000 volunteers. How many volunteers? I can't hear you. Only 1,000. Strong Christians. Prayer warriors. Young. I don't want anything above 70. You must be young. You must be strong. To join me in seeking the face of the Lord for Nigeria and for the world. Before you volunteer, these 1,000 volunteers and myself, we will be fasting continuously for 72 hours. 24 hours will be spent for Nigeria. 24 hours multiplied by 1,000 people, that's quite a number of hours. 24 hours we will spend for the world. The remaining 24 hours, I will tell you if you are a volunteer. <laughs> so we don't need to. So on a first come, first served basis, I need 1,000 prayer warriors. We will do the praying early in February. I will tell you if you are one of the volunteers. They will put on the screen the phone number of my secretary. If you are volunteering, you will send to him your name, your contact, and your age. That's the number on the board, on the screen. Zero, seven, zero, eight, seven, eight, zero, five, seven, two, two. I will repeat. Zero, seven, zero, eight, seven, eight, zero, five, seven, two, two. So if you want to volunteer on the basis of first come, first served, I will take a thousand people. We are going to 
seek the face of the Lord in prayer and continuous fasting for 72 hours asking God for mercy you see why the situation has reached a stage as far as say COVID-19 is concerned for example because of what happened to South Africa you know they were the first one to detect uh, Omicron in future if a new one surfaces those who detect will not talk because they won't want what happened to South Africa to happen to them so we need to do something urgently so that there will be no more grandchildren of COVID-19 and then of course <laughs> apart from COVID-19 our problems in Nigeria uh, requires some urgent action well I think that's about all I need to tell you now oh well uh, the Lord says the issue of migration the issue of migration is going to take a new turn in the new year you know this migrants problems so we'll take a new turn I don't want to begin to talk to you about whether uh, fire outbreaks floods except for one I, I, I don't need I don't think I should forget this Daddy says, I might have not much effect on Nigeria, but we need to pray, that there will be two monstrous storms. One coming from the Atlantic, we call it hurricane. One coming from the Pacific Ocean. We call it typhoon that unless they are weakened before they make a landfall the result will be terrible but uh, the 1,000 volunteers will discuss that one also with God as for the redeemed Christian Church of God, all I have for you is good news. But your pastors will be telling you, but there is good news, but they are absolutely confidential as it were. Maybe you hear a bit of it on Sunday. Uh, Sunday, that's tomorrow now. And that's not too long from now. So, that's about all I have to tell you. I'm going to bless your offering now. And then, you'll be free. The altar will be open. You can now come to God spend as much time as we want before God discussing your future asking him for whatever you want it's a very crucial moment it's a new year and uh, when I'm blessing your offering now I'm going to ask him to please open the windows of heaven hear your cry and grant your request so let's stand.
Ah, let me hear a thunderous hallelujah. <laughs> Daddy, I want to bless your holy name. Thank you that as far as your children are concerned, the siege is over. Thank you for the fresh air that is coming up during the first Holy Ghost service. Thank you for beautiful things you have lined up for us this year. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, bless the offering of your children. Sanctify it. Use it for your glory. This year, Father, don't let us spend for the devil. And when the mighty breakthroughs begin to come, give us the lion's share. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, somebody said, hey, you haven't told us about our fasting. Ah, you know we are going to fast now. We will start by uh, January 11. That's our usual time. And, uh, <laughs> and we are going to fast for 50 days only. So we will start by January 11 and we will finish by 2nd of March. Uh, and you, whether you believe it or not, the fact that you are constantly fasting is why God himself is going to treat you very, very special this year. And by the way, this is the year of doubles. Double blessings, double testimonies, double victories, and double children. That's for you in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, of course. And so now you are going to shout the biggest hallelujah you have ever shouted. Eh? After which you will come, if you want to pray, let me hear you shout the biggest hallelujah ever. Stay tuned to Double Vision for the whole of 20.